We only want to suppress if something is true. So we want our suppression choice to say, oops, yes. Check it, looks good. And we'll save that. And we'll okay our way out. Now when we preview, it's going to ask us, should we hide the grand totals or not? If, if our value is yes, it suppresses the report footer. I have no last page, or no second page rather. And if I refresh the report again, and I select no, do not suppress the footer, there it is. Um, where this is actually probably a little more useful is when you want to suppress the details. So let's do that. I'm going to take away my formula for this. And then unhide my section. So let's imagine we're going to kind of reverse the role. Uh, we want to give the end user the ability to hide the details and only view, say, the report footer. And actually, I'm going to change my new page before here so it all appears on the same page. There we go. So let's, uh, let's imagine we want to hide the details section. So it's kind of the same thing. We're going to go back into our parameter, and we'll just change the verbiage here. Hide contact listing. The, the, our, our list of rows out of our database. So now we're going to plug that into our format section on our details. And we're going to suppress it. And we're only going to suppress it if my suppression choice equals yes. So now we preview. And I say I do want to suppress my details. So now I only get my grand totals. If I refresh again, prompt for new. And I say do not suppress my contact listing, I get it. So I'm hoping that I, I can show you that here that, that parameters don't necessarily have to just control data selection. They can actually control pretty much anything else uh, in Crystal. So really take advantage of that, especially if you have a report that, that we can kind of extend the life of this report because it might be in use by both management and maybe the cold calling department and they both want to see the report in different ways. Management just wants to see how many leads came in today. They just want this cr this cross tab and of course the end end user wants to see you know uh, each contact listed singly. So again we can actually drive pretty much anything that you see with this X-2 button we can drive that with a formula. And parameters just happen to be an excellent way to allow the end user to provide values at, at runtime. Okay, moving on to our all choice parameter. Uh, this is something that I actually use a lot. <clears throat> Let's imagine our example from before. I'm actually going to delete my suppression choice and this other parameter. We're going to keep our state parameter because that's kind of what we're concerned with here. I'm going to go back into my select expert and plug that back in. Again, I go right to my formula editor. And I want to say my state is equal to my parameter of state. Great. And we'll just refresh my report. I just want to make sure that it is working as expected. I just want to see New York contacts. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's imagine this. Uh, we're, we're giving the end user the ability to uh, select a list, to put together a list of states they want to see. So they can put in PA and New York, South Carolina, and what have you. Um, now, what you typically run into is that you have a manager who wants to run the report for all states. Well, you could certainly tell the manager, well, certainly what you could do is you could just refresh the report and certainly, you know, you could, uh, you could provide a list of every state in the union here and then the end user would have to go in and add every state in the union. That's one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it would be to, to copy this report, clone the report, and remove 
the state parameter constraint on the selection criteria. I, that's a very popular thing to do. But then you run into administration problems. Uh, if something needs to change on one report, it needs to change on the other. It can uh, just really kill you on, on the, the uh, maintenance labor on, on, a, on a report's life, lifetime. So what we really want to do is provide them an all parameter. So they can go ahead and they can choose single states and that's fine, but when the manager wants to see all the states, we're going to let him put in the all choice. Now when I, when I use this all choice in parentheses, that means absolutely nothing. You could use it like all in caps, or you could even say all records. What we choose to be our all identifier really doesn't matter. It can be whatever we want it to be. We could even make it uh, uh, a couple of dollar signs. I mean, not that we want to do that. But in this case, I like to use all in parentheses. So we want to give the end user the ability to just add this all item and have it list all of the records in the database, regardless of state. So what we need to do here is actually go into our select expert. And within our selection formula, we need to write the formula to expect that all identifier and if it finds it to act accordingly. So the first thing we need to do is we need to test the input on that parameter. When we're testing things, we're almost always doing it with an if then else. So we're going to say if, oh god, I'm so stuck on caps here. If my state parameter equals all. So if the manager wants to see all the states, then, and this is a neat handy crystal trick to know, if my state equals all, then true. And when you say then true in crystal, that means that it's going to skip over kind of the rest of that line. Let, let, let me take it a step further. So if our state input equals all, then, then true, I want to see everything. Otherwise, else, I want my state to equal our parameter. So this part, oops, equal sign would help. So this part right here we should be very familiar with. This is how our select criteria worked before. It's just said, okay, I just want my database state to be equal to whatever is in the parameter. So now we're, we're just backing up and we're testing it. Before we, before we tell Crystal that we want it to only select the states in our, in our, select, in our parameter, we're saying, okay, if, if the manager types in all, then everything is true. Otherwise, do it like you normally do it. So how does this work? Well, the first thing you have to do when, you, when, you, when you're going to use an all identifier like this, you're going to go back into your parameter field and set up that default value. So now when I refresh my report, I can select this all. Well, the first thing I want to test is I, I don't even, I'm not even worried about the all part yet. I just want to make sure I didn't break the rest of the report. So let's go ahead and just try to to look at New York, and we are still looking at New York. That's actually a, a, a good practice. Whenever you change something, make sure it didn't break the original functionality. I catch myself doing that a lot. So now we can refresh the report, and now if we select that all identifier, we're going to add it to our list, just like it was a state. And we hit OK. Now we have everything out of the database. How did Crystal know to do that? It was all, everything right here is in our select expert. And it's that then true. I use that all the time. So if our state equals all, then everything is true. Then all the states are true. Otherwise, do it as usual. Only pick the ones they selected now. And now, uh, well, one thing you will have to tell the end user is that if they, if they, and actually I'm not sure how it'll react to this. If I prompt for new parameters and I say add all, and then I add, for instance, New York. What will it do? I'm not quite sure. Uh, looks like it's smart enough to select all still. And I'm pretty sure it's because all was the first choice. So let's test that one more time. I'll select New York. And then I'll select all. 
Oh, when it's smart enough to do it. Okay, um, so, so sometimes you'll find that when working with Crystal, it does things like this that I call like auto-magical things, where it'll do things like this because it, it knows that I'm looking for that all, and if it finds it anywhere in there, it's going to, to break on that then true. I hope you understand that because you can actually use this then true in a lot of different areas. So And you can actually use this all identifier within uh, multiple parameters in the same report. So if we had like a parameter for state and then a parameter for say username, we could use the all there. And you would just continue to, um, let's just add that to our select export. So I want to show you how that looks stacked up a little bit. So if our state parameter equals all, then all the states are true. Otherwise, give it just the state. And if my username equals all, then true. Else, and in this case, we'll plug in our create create by from the gold mine database. Oop. Then create by should equal my username. So this is how it would look stacked up. So you you I mean whenever whenever you're using an if then else you can always add another one by appending an and or an or here, and the ands and ors worked, uh, work uh, with Boolean logic as you would expect them to, and you can continue to stack if then else's. So if you have a pr uh, report prompting for like state, username, uh, a quarter of the year even, which I guess wouldn't be so applicable to the all, all choice, but you can do that. You can keep testing for this all in parentheses, and if it finds it, tell crystal that it's true and when you use this then true it, it it seems to work on a per line basis so in this case if our state is not equal to, to this all identifier it'll grab this this half of the line and then it'll skip the next one and it'll test it for all if it finds all it'll grab like the left hand side i hope that makes sense uh, a really handy tool to have in your crystal tool okay so we're just about out of time for today. I'd like to thank you for joining us. You can always find our tips and tricks uh, from months and ages past by going to our blog.marshgroup.net or our super cool new YouTube page at youtube.com slash user slash the Marsh Group. I'm always looking for the next batch of crystal tips and tricks, so certainly if you're experiencing any pain or challenges in your neck of the woods, I'd love to hear about it at Justin at marksgroup.net. I'd like to thank you for attending and have a great day.